بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي حج النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We know in the month of Ramadan we have etiquette, we have adab and we know very well that the month of Ramadan is like a gas. It has come and it will go. Therefore, we want to make sure that we respect the month of Ramadan. Same like a guest when it comes to your house. When a guest comes to your house, you make sure that you respect them in the best of manner because you want them to feel good. You want them to come back again. The same way when Ramadan comes to us, we make sure that we do the adab of Ramadan. You know, we respect the month of Ramadan. It's called the etiquette of Ramadan. And first and foremost, rejoicing, being happy that Ramadan is here. We are happy that the month of Ramadan has come. Why? Because this could be the month that could open the door of Jannah for me. This could be the month that would forgive each and every of my deeds or bad deeds of what I have done. Therefore, in regards to the etiquette of Ramadan, we want to make sure that we actually do them. The first and foremost etiquette of Ramadan is we know that we fast. And we do not need to go into the thiq of fasting and we know this is the first and foremost thing when it comes to Ramadan. You fast from dawn to dusk. And we know very well that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said whoever fasts one day for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal remove and distance his face from Jahannam, a distance of 70 years. Allahu Akbar. Imagine only one day fasting for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you know, the smell that come out of the mouth of someone who is fasting is better in the sight of Allah than the perfume of musk. Allahu Akbar. So fasting is the first and foremost etiquette of Ramadan, as well as your prayer. I mean, you cannot fast and then you do not pray. So your five daily prayers have to be there while you are fasting. It goes together. So it cannot be that someone actually fast and do not perform the prayer. This is something that we do not want to do because there are scholars who have said that those people who actually fast and they do not pray, what guarantee do they have that their siyam is going to be accepted? Therefore, we need to know that praying is one of the adab of Ramadan as well. Not only this, praying in jama'ah. This is the time where you connect yourself with Allah the Almighty. This is the time where you go and actually meet people out there because jama'ah, it creates some kind of brotherhood bond between you and your brothers. And we got to understand as well, my brothers, that praying in jama'ah gives you 25 or 27 time reward more than praying alone. Like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the comparison between praying alone and in jama'ah is 25, 25 times more. In another hadith, 27 times more. Therefore, we need to know that praying in jama'ah gives us more reward. And subhanallah, even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I wish I would ask someone to establish the prayer. And I will go from behind and burn those men's house who are praying in the house without any valid excuse. Therefore, praying in jama'ah is very, very important. Unless you have a valid excuse. So in the month of Ramadan, it's the best time where you go there, you meet Allah Azza wa Jal with your Muslim brothers. And you see the amount of good Muslim brothers out there. You make connection with people. You make your iftar together. You make your salawat together. So jama'ah is something very, very important. It's one of the adab of Ramadan. As well as sadaqah. 
You know very well that in the month of Ramadan, we are fasting. And when we fast, we feel the hunger and we feel the thirst of the less fortunate one. It makes us more wanting to share and care. Because we need to understand that sometimes we're not into the situation of the people who are less fortunate. Therefore, Ramadan is the time for us to know that how those people feel. So it's easy for us to remove a sadaqah and give it to them. It's easy for us to remove our zakah in the month of Ramadan and give it to them. Even though we don't have to give our zakah in the month of Ramadan. The zakah is to be given when you're saving, which is more than 85 grams of gold, and it is more than a hell, which is more than a year, and the, you take 2.5% of it. It doesn't have to be Ramadan, but people have taken Ramadan at the point of removing their zakah. But it's not only about zakah, it's about sadaqah in general. Giving people who are less fortunate, people who need any kind of help. It could be money, it could be uh, a help, it could be a support, a support of mental support, physical support, even spiritual support, people may need. So these are called sadaqah. And these are the things that you do in the month of Ramadan. The adab, the are good thing that you may do in the month of Ramadan. As well as smiling. It's a sadaqah. Did you know that people in the month of Ramadan, many of them are, you feel them, they have that grumpy face, you know, they have that kind of face that, you know, I'm fasting, don't come near me. I'm, you know, they get upset very quickly. You know, they, they, they do not want to have this kind of relationship of, of harmony and peace among others. Why? Or what they're thinking is, I'm missing my coffee. I'm missing my tea. I'm missing my juice. So they get moody. No, we're not supposed to be like this. We're not supposed to be the people who are always sitting and don't do anything. No, we're supposed to be active. Supposed to be smiling. Supposed to be sharing and caring for others. Supposed to be active in our da'wah. Supposed to be active in our propagation of what's right and what's wrong. You know, at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they used to go out. They used to make sure that Islam is being taught. Islam is being propagated in a matter, in manner, day or night. There wouldn't be anything to stop them when it comes to Siyam. For therefore, why are we people, sometimes we act like if we cannot do anything when it comes to Siyam and Ramadan. Oh, Ramadan is here, I can't do anything now. No, life goes on, but we increase in our ibadah and we keep on smiling. Let people understand that yes, we are here, we are the same person. As a matter of fact, we become more generous. For Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to be generous. In the month of Ramadan, he was more generous. Allahu Akbar. For therefore, we have to be someone who become the better person in the month of Ramadan. So when those people out there, they see us, they don't feel sorry for us. When they look at us, they're like, SubhanAllah, look at them. Still strong. Spiritually strong, physically strong, mentally strong. Why? Because they're fasting. It's not that the fasting makes you a more, uh, you know, unproductive person. No, Allah. Again, we do what's supposed to be done. This is one of the adab, one of the etiquettes of fasting. Don't be like those people who just sit out there and don't do anything. And at the same time as well is that sharing your ifar. This is something, it has come like a custom, and it's something very, very good to do. You know, it increases the love between you and your neighbors. Increases the love between you and the poor and the needy. Increases the love between you and your, and your relatives. SubhanAllah, these are the kind of adab that we may, we may do in the month of uh, Ramadan. And again, as well as helping others, like how we say, doing the siwak, as well as uh, making sure that everyone have their food at the time of breaking their fast. Those are the good things that we need to look at when it comes to the month of Ramadan. 
and we may speak about what are the things that we should not do in the month of Ramadan. Unfortunately, it has become pretty common for people to do such an action. If you were to see it, you see some people, they sleep a lot. Or what they do in the month of Ramadan, they sleep. After Salat al-Fajr, they sleep until Asr, they wake up and then they have the iftar. This is not the siyam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking from you. So by you always sleep, that means you're not being proactive. That means you're not being active during the day. That's not the reason Allah asks you to fast, so you can sleep the whole day. No. You go to your work, you read your Quran, you make sure that your relationship with the Quran is, alhamdulillah, being strengthened. You want to take a rest, take a rest. Get up again and do your some ta'a, do your ibadah. It's okay if ever, as a lady, you need to cook, you need to clean. It's totally fine. You take a nap again, and then you do your ibadah again. But to sleep almost like five, six hours, seven hours, just wake up and then do the iftar, that is not the siyam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is demanding from us. So, we sleep, we take rest, we do our ibadah, we do our daily calls, what's supposed to be done, we rest as well, but don't take me wrong, I'm not saying not to sleep. No, we do sleep during the day and during the night. We do our ibadah during the day and during the night. We do our qira'ah of the Qur'an during the day and during the night. Of course, we have to rest. But to make the whole day at the sleeping point, this is not something that go by the objectives of siyam. As well as abstaining from the muharramat. How many people, because of they are off, they got nothing to do, what do they do? They take pleasure in gossiping. They take pleasure in slandering. They take pleasure in all these kind of muharramat. And now you don't need to go everywhere. You don't need to go from places to places in order for you to make ghibah or namima or make fun of others. You can easily do that while you are at home, while you are on your phone, while you are just on social media. Sit there, make fun of others, listen to haram, look at haram, and talk behind the people back on all this kind of social media platform. We shouldn't do this. Keep our time for the ibadah. Keep our time for the ibadah. This is something very, very important. As well as wasting food. <laughs> wasting food in the time, at the time of Ramadan. Subhanallah, when it comes to Ramadan, sometimes you see people shopping has increased. But when you look at it, you're like, wait a minute, it's Ramadan. We don't have lunch, we don't have tea time, we don't have any kind of, you know, 10 o'clock tea time. What's happening? But it's we who think that when we break our fast, we have to cook and cook and cook. We had to eat, we had to make sure the table is filled up with food. That is not the sunnah. Whatever you have and whatever you do, whatever you usually eat for dinner, put that there. Why are we saying so? Because we don't want our wives, we don't want our mothers, we don't want our sisters, we don't want our daughters to spend a lot of time cooking, pleasing people to fill up the table. No. After Asar, it's time for you to cook. You cook what's supposed to be cooked. You put on the table before Adhan al Maghrib. Get some time for yourself, O oh mothers out there, or oh sisters out there. Get some time for yourself in order to make some dua before iftar. Don't indulge yourself in the, in the kitchen for the whole day. And then when it comes to the night, you have to clean up. You have to wash the dishes. You have to do all these. So what's Ramadan was about? Ramadan is about you and Allah Azza wa Jal. Ramadan is about for you to attain taqwa. 
Not for you to come up with new dishes every day. Not for you to try out new dishes and new menu every day. It's okay to do so, but spend a little bit, little amount. You know, like two or three hours, two hours, that, that's, that's more than enough. But to be in the kitchen from all the way from three till seven, or from four till ten iftar, no. This is something that, we're not saying that affect your siyam, but it does, it goes against the etiquette of Ramadan in itself. Ramadan is a time for you to actually strengthen your bond with Allah Azza wa Jal. But unfortunately, we find people, when it's time of Adhan, they're still in the kitchen. They're eating the dates while they're cooking. No. Everyone has to put their hand together, both male and female, men and women, put their hand together and come together, make sure the iftar is ready at the time of Adhan. Eat your dates, have your water, go for your salah, come back and have the food that you prepared, that's totally fine. But to spend loads of time in the kitchen, this defeats the purpose of Ramadan. And at the same time, wastage of food. We waste more food in Ramadan as compared to outside Ramadan. You know very well what I'm talking about. I mean, in Ramadan we see the amount of food that are being wasted, subhanallah. And the amount of food that we eat, subhanallah, we eat more than outside Ramadan. We have a concept that when it comes to iftar, we eat and we eat and we eat trying to make up what we miss. No. Our mi'da, our stomach stay the same. To the contrary, we put less because empty. Little bit, little bit. That is why sometimes outside Ramadan you see people going to the hospital, having issues. That is why sometimes after iftar you see people want to sleep. You see people, they, when it comes to taraweeh, they are very, very tired. They are heavy and guess what? They become lazy. Yes or no? So then what happened? This is because we are not putting the adab of siyam in place. Therefore, my brothers and sisters out there, these adab what we talk about are easy to do. Are easy to do. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy upon us to put all this adab into practice. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept each and every of our siyam and our qiyam bi-idhnillah ta'ala. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran.